Are you trying to reduce waste and minimize your company's environmental impact? With the 2030 sustainability milestone fast approaching, companies are under pressure to provide detailed plans for their green transformation. Fortunately, data analytics can help you to make data-driven decisions to improve sustainability and meet ESG standards. In this video, we'll show you how to use supply chain analytics to support your effort of carbon footprint reduction and make a positive impact on the planet. In this video, we will assume that you are the logistic continuous improvement engineer in an international fashion group. There are stores all around the world. Stores are delivered from local warehouses. These warehouses are replenished from factories located in Asia. Along the chain, data is created, transmitted and stored in databases. Supply chain analytics is a set of tools and methodology using these flows of information to answer operational questions. Descriptive analytics will tell you what happened in the past, for instance, how much CO2 the organization emitted last year. Diagnostic analytics. You will know why it happened, for instance, what is the largest source of emissions. While predictive analytics tools focus on what will happen in the future, how much emission can we expect next year. And finally, prescriptive analytics will help you to take decisions to optimize a specific metric. For instance, deliver US customers from Canada to minimize transportation emissions. Let's start with descriptive analytics. Use data to describe past events, measuring CO2 emissions by geography, scope or product. This is the first step of green earth transformation. You need to set the baseline. The idea is to be the single source of truth across the organization using data analytics. A basic example is the report of emissions of your distribution network. By country, with this bubble map for instance. Or by item, with this bar plot on the right. This requires extracting, transforming and loading data from multiple sources. The main source is the table of shipped order lines with order number, item code, warehouse code and delivery location. You can join the master data to add unit of measure conversion that will help you to estimate the volume and the weight of your cargoes in tons. On top of this, you join the departure and delivery locations to calculate the distances. You have now a single source of harmonized shipment records with all the information needed to calculate your CO2 emissions. You can find more details about the next steps in an explainer video linked in the description. With this dataset, you have a rich source of information to generate insights about the footprint of your distribution network, to implement a set of metrics to monitor your performance. For instance, you can calculate the kilogram of CO2 per unit sold, the number of pallets per delivery, and you can start to, to set your baseline. Measuring CO2 emissions across all transportation modes is crucial in creating a sustainable supply chain roadmap that meets your ESG goals. Detailed results, broken down by mode and shipment, can help you identify areas for improvement and set emissions reduction targets. Tracking and reporting of emissions, alongside other key performance indicators like lead times and costs, is essential to ensure progress towards sustainability goals. By integrating CO2 emission into your operational metrics, you can create a more sustainable supply chain that reduces your carbon footprint while maintaining efficiency and profitability. A circular economy can also be a solution to reduce the environmental impact of a fashion retailer. Data analytics can help to design optimal processes focusing on efficient reverse logistics and waste reduction. Monitoring key metrics provides insight into improving flow management for a circular model. Optimization based on data analytics creates a cost-effective and sustainable logistics model to reintegrate return items in the distribution loop. If we come back to our example, this requires logistic process to collect and sort used garments in your stores, monitored with KPIs like logistic cost per unit, the return rate or the connection lead time and the recycling process to manage sorted items with performance indicators like processing lead time, contamination stream and recovery rate. I will provide more details on the logistic operations for circular economy in a future video. But now, let's continue with diagnostic analytics. The objective is to understand why an event occurred in the past. What is the main root cause of the explosion of emissions in France last year? It relies on the capacity of tracking emissions along the value chain with a high granularity of details. 
and you can link emissions with a process, a location, a market, or a product. To illustrate this, we can take the example of distribution emissions monitoring. You have two delivery routes with an average cargo weight of 250 kg versus 1.1 tons. If your sustainability department asks you why the second route is 2.5 times more polluting than the first one, Diagnostic Analytics will help you to explain that it is due to the average shipment rate and the transportation mode. This provides several advantages beyond emission reporting. You can build a better understanding of your operations. Why are you using air freight instead of sea freight? Assess what are your biggest emission sources. Air freight is making 70% of the total emissions. And drive business decisions. Let's stop using air freight for warehouse delivery. As organizations strive to reduce their environmental impact, data analytics can help them to find emission hotspots and optimize logistic networks. With diagnostic results, they can implement multimodal transportation strategies to cut emissions and improve efficiency. The goal is to achieve sustainability targets and create a more efficient supply chain with data-driven continuous improvement initiatives. This approach supports a decarbonization roadmap, reduce end-to-end -end costs, and contributes to a more sustainable future. Life cycle assessment LCA is a method used to evaluate the environmental impact of a product throughout its entire life cycle from raw material extraction to disposal. LCA is closely linked to diagnostic analytics as it provides companies with valuable insights into the environmental footprint of their products and processes. However, performing a comprehensive LCA can be complex and time-consuming. By developing a data architecture that can automate this process, organizations can gain a more accurate and efficient understanding of the environmental footprint of their operations. If you take the example of a t-shirt sold in a fast fashion store in Europe, energy and water are used to cultivate and transform cotton to produce these t-shirts in India. Fuel, packaging material and plastic films are used to deliver garments in bulk to your Sotra distribution center. CO2 emissions and waste from consumables are generated to deliver the stores. And finally, you have usage and disposal of these garments by final users. If you have built data capabilities to capture, process and store the right data, you can automatically find the hotspots of emissions along the product lifecycle. We can now move to prescriptive analytics. Let the algorithm tell you what to do. Considering that I want to minimize my total footprint, where do I need to locate my factories and distribution centers? Using the same linear programming models designed to minimize your cost or improve performance. An example is a supply chain network design problem. Supply chain network design and inventory management optimization can help you to reduce the CO2 footprint by improving operational efficiency. Organizations can achieve better results and reduce their cost by optimizing flows redesigning distribution networks, and improving store ordering policies. Implementing this initiative will lead to increased truck filling rates, reduced packing material consumption, and boosted warehouse productivity. So, in addition to investing in green equipment, this kind of disruptive solutions are also ways to support your green supply chain transformation. Let's deep dive into the network design problem. You have a demand per market. You can choose from a set of potential factories in different locations. The objective is to minimize the costs of total production. The algorithm will select a set of locations with different capacities and design the flows between the factories and the market. If you have an objective function aiming to minimize the total cost, you will produce in countries with cheap viable costs, like India and Brazil here, to deliver the different markets what if we change the objective functions? We keep the same demand, we have the same footprint of potential factories, we add the emissions per piece produced in our power meters. And now our objective function is to minimize the total emissions to produce and deliver your items. What will be the output of the model? The footprint is completely different now. We have a localization of the production some markets produce locally to reduce the transportation footprint. Of course, there will be an impact on the total cost of production and delivery. It is a matter of balance between sustainability and profitability. Usually, it is driven towards regional localization of production. 
and you can use the model outputs to support business decision-making process. Let's now have a look at the green inventory management problem. What is the optimal frequency of replenishment to reduce your footprint? Currently, you deliver your stores two times per week. Because of this high frequency, the truck filling rate is only 30%, and you have a high proportion of mixed cartons. That results in a CO2 emission of 24 tons. What would be the results if we only deliver one time per week? After simulation, you discover that you, you can reach 100% of fill rate. Your stores order more per replenishment with a higher proportion of full cartons. And the impact on the overall footprint is huge. Based on this analysis that you can find in my blog and in a future video, you can draft a prescriptive model that will set the optimal order frequency to minimize the footprint of your distribution network. To conclude, supply chain analytics can be a great support for your green transformation. Methodology and tools are the ones used for cost reductions and performance improvement. From a mathematical point of view, you just need to change the objective function from cost to CO2 emission minimization. The insights provided by this solution will help you to design and implement initiatives to meet your green roadmap targets. I hope this video gave you enough insights on how to use supply chain analytics to boost your green transformation. You can find detailed examples and case studies in my blog and future videos. If you have any questions, feel free to share them in the comment section.